Hey guys, it's Frank from PBH, and in this video, we're going to show you a complete kit that we put together to help you convert your composite oil pan over to the earlier steel version. On top of that, we're going to go step by step on how to get it installed and how to do the conversion yourself. So to date we have three different generations of the Coyote engine. Now generation 1 is your 2011 to 14, generation 2 is your 2015 to 17, then you got generation 3 which is our current production piece, 2018 and up. Now that generation 3 engine had a lot of differences, it has direct injection, it has a little bit more power, even an extra point of compression. But one of the things that affects all the builds across the board no matter what you're putting it in is space and the Gen 3 Coyote engines have something in particular that the Generation 1 and 2 did not have. They have a composite oil pan. So the composite oil pan, although giving you extra capacity, does take extra space, and that space is at a premium in most of these engine bays that we're doing swaps into. So the options are to go ahead and get rid of that composite oil pan and put an aftermarket piece in, but now with this whole kit from PBH, you can also opt to put in an earlier OEM oil pan. Now what Ford did in this composite design is they put the windage tray and the pickup tube in the oil pan as one piece. Now there's nothing wrong with doing that, but when we go to convert it to the earlier Gen 1, Gen 2 version, well, the pieces aren't the same. Even the oil pump is unique to Generation 3. So it's not as easy as just switching the oil pan out. You don't just take the Gen 3 oil pan off and put a Gen 2 oil pan on there and pick up a Gen 2 oil pickup tube and some hardware and bolt it in. Literally, the pickup tube that you need has to be a custom piece. It's not going to be an OEM item. So what PBH has done is we manufactured the piece and we were welding them and putting them together here in-house and putting together a comprehensive kit that'll help you get everything taken care of in one fell swoop. So let's take a look at what you get in the kit. There's going to be a steel 8-quart oil pan sourced from the Generation 2 15-17 to 17 Mustang. You're going to have all brand new oil pan bolts. You're going to have two main cap bolts that now have studs on them. We're going to show you in detail where those go and how to get them installed. You're going to have a new hex spacer for the pickup tube, a lock nut, and a bolt for the hex spacer. On top of all that, you're going to get a brand new oil pan gasket right from the Ford factory that has the windage tray built into it. So majority of this kit, I would say just about every single piece in this kit, is factory quality and OEM. The PBH Gen 3 to Gen 2 steel oil pan conversion for your Coyote engine is part number ACC131 in our catalog. It retails for $359.99 and for that price you get everything included in the kit. What we're going to do next in the video is take you step by step into the conversion and show you all the tools, all the pieces of the kit and how they come together so you have zero issues completing this conversion on your Coyote swap. Let's talk real quick about the tools you're going to need for the job. You need a half inch socket, 17 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter, and 15 millimeter socket. That's for all the different hardware we're going to be using here between the oil pan bolts, the hex spacer, the bolt for the hex spacer, and the pickup tube. Torque wrenches. We need to have something that's going to be able to work in inch pounds and foot pounds. A lot of the stuff that's inch pounds, we're talking about 18 inch pounds. It, that's pretty much hand tight, so you don't have to get too crazy, but to be accurate, get an inch pound torque wrench. You also want to do the degree. You got to have a, a breaker bar with a degree wheel on it to make sure you're getting your 45 degree and your 90 degree. If not, you can eyeball it like I did, and I think you should be able to get the job done. For the ultimate precision, make sure you're using a breaker bar that has that degree finder or angle built into it. Lastly, you're going to need some silicone gasket sealant. That silicone gasket sealant, that's just going to be used in small areas, probably no bigger than maybe eight millimeters at a, at a turn. It's basically all the jams between the rear cover plate for the rear main seal and where the timing cover meets the oil pan rail as well. You could go to your local Ford dealer and pick up the sealant that they use from the factory. If not, just about any other gasket sealant, good quality stuff, will get the job done. So we're going to get started by just removing your Gen 3 oil pan nice thing about these oil pans is once you get that off, you're literally taking off your windage tray, your o-ring gasket, and the pickup tube just by removing the oil pan because it's all one assembly. It's one of the cool things about that, but 
also is what's prohibiting us from just swapping the oil pans. Now what I'm showing you here is the O-ring style gasket that's used to seal the pickup tube to the oil pump. It is particular to Gen 3, do not lose that. All right, here we're gonna be showing you the positions or the main cap bolts we gotta remove. Here is the diagram from Ford. It's positions 14 and 15 in the torque sequence. And all you have to do right now is with a breaker bar, go ahead and pop them loose and get them out of the way because we will be replacing them with the supplied new main cap bolts that have the studs built into them. Now to get these main cap bolts loose, we mentioned using the breaker bar. For this part, you're also going to be using your 15 millimeter socket from our tool list. Now you're going to grab the two supplied main cap bolts that have the studs built into them. These are gonna to be to hold the new oil pickup tube in place and fasten it to the engine because the Gen 3 versions don't have it. You're gonna need that 15 millimeter socket once again and here you're gonna need your torque wrench. You're gonna to set that torque wrench to 48 foot-pounds and that's the torque setting that you start with. You're gonna to be torquing them to 48 foot-pounds and then you're gonna transfer that socket over to your breaker bar preferably one that has an angle or degree finder on it, if not by eyes, and you're gonna to torque it an additional 90 degrees from the 48 foot-pounds. Now there really is no sequence to these two because everything else is still torqued as it was from the factory. So you can start with either or, it doesn't really matter. But you just gotta make sure you torque it to 48 foot-pounds, one, then the other, and then follow that up with the breaker bar at 90 degrees. Once you do that, they're good to go and ready to be used. Next step will be to grab the hex spacer from the supplied hardware and you're going to mount this hex spacer on the rear stud, the one closest to your rear main seal. You just thread it on by hand. Then you're going to go ahead and grab your 17 millimeter socket and we'll show you the torque sequence, basically how much you have to torque this guy down to make sure that's on there tight so it doesn't fall off in your oil pan. And you can see here from the workshop manual, we're going to be torquing this down to 18 pound feet of torque. So go ahead and grab your torque wrench with that 17 millimeter socket. Go ahead and apply that 18 foot pounds to it and you'll be done with the tube spacer installation. So on the screen is the workshop manual recommendation for the silicone. We're going to be mounting this in and putting it down at four positions where the timing cover meets the engine block and where the rear main seal engine cover meets the rear engine block. That way we get a good seal even with the gasket once the gasket is installed. The oil pan gasket is modified by PVH for this installation. It's not just a stock gasket. It starts off its life as a stock gasket, as you can see. It has a windage tray built into it, and this is what you would find in a Generation 1 or Generation 2 Coyote. Just go ahead and put the oil pan gasket in place, lining up all the holes with the pan rail, and making sure you don't disturb too much of the silicone while you're setting it in place. What we're pointing at here is the pickup tube entry point with the seal in place and then the other two studs, the hex spacer and the stud, they're going to be fastening the new oil pump pickup tube into place with. And as you can see, it's got the Gen 3 style connection, which you go right into that seal. You can use a little bit of motor oil, go ahead and lube it up and simply just lay it on the engine. Everything will line right up and we'll go ahead and grab the hardware to fasten it into place. With the oil pump pickup tube in place, we'll grab the bolt and the lock nut to go ahead and fasten it down, make sure it doesn't move around on us. Simply just thread the lock nut in the forward most position on that stud and put it on by hand. We're gonna be torquing that down in a second. The same thing with the bolt. Now it's time to torque down the lock nut and the hex spacer bolt. Now in the diagram on your screen, you're gonna disregard the hardware that's going directly to the oil pump and just concentrate on the one that goes to the hex spacer towards the rear of the engine. That one we're gonna to be torquing to 18 foot pounds. And for that, we're gonna be using a 10 millimeter socket. Now for the lock nut, we're gonna follow the same torque specs. And for that, you need a half inch socket.
with the oil pickup tube fastened in place it's time to go ahead and put the oil pan on as you can see this is the gen 1 gen 2 steel 8 quart oil pan from the mustang gt that we include in the kit if you still have room constraints with this pan it's easier to modify than the composite to go ahead and install it just line up all the holes on the gasket so you can go ahead and start applying your hardware just start applying all the oil pan fasteners into place into all the mounting positions what we're going to show you now is the sequence that you want to torque them down in you'll start basically by driving them in softly go ahead and get some pressure on the oil pan and then we'll come back and torque them in that same sequence now as we begin fastening the hardware for the oil pan we want to go ahead and start following the sequence that's going to be your torque sequence and the way that works is the third bolt back from the front on the driver's side that's position one once you tighten position one you go directly across to position two then you move forward back on the driver's side to position three directly across to four and then you move back one from the starting position on the driver's side that's position five cross the six and then move all the way to the front on the driver's side for seven cross for eight all the way to the back on the driver's side that's nine across the ten continuing on the rear you got position 11 and 12 now what you don't see in the diagram are the bolts for the oil pan as it engages the timing cover in the front what I did there is basically just start in the center crisscross work my way to the outer edges and torque them down in the same sequence add that sequence into this torque sequence and make sure that everything's torqued down evenly so here we are preparing to torque down the bolts now at this point i've already done the first part of the torque sequence which was the 18 inch pounds now i did that with the electric ratchet you can do it by hand as well because 18 inch pounds is pretty much hand tight without killing it the 89 inch pounds is a little bit different. You're going to want to use a torque wrench to make sure you get it just right so you don't crush the gasket and cause any type of leaks or even push out any silicone at this point and cause any leaks. So you're going to be following your torque sequence, 89 inch pounds all the way around, including the front bolts for the timing cover where the oil pan engages there. And once that's done, you'll be switching over to a regular ratchet or breaker bar with that 10 millimeter socket and go ahead and give it the 45 degrees that Ford suggest in their workshop manual. Now once you've completed the torque sequence, we're ready to go. We have our Gen 1, Gen 2 oil pan installed on our Gen 3 engine. This is going to allow us to go ahead and give some extra clearance in the engine bay for the installation. And furthermore, since it's steel, it's a little bit easier to modify if you have to do so. Hope everybody enjoyed that installation video. And if you have any questions about this product, make sure you email us, info at pbhperformance.com, or leave a comment right here on this video. We'll be there to go ahead and answer it for you. While you're here on YouTube, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really helps us grow the channel and get outreach to more guys just like you looking for information on Coyote Swap products. You can also join us Wednesday nights here on our YouTube channel for PBH Live. We're on for a full hour starting at 7 o'clock Eastern, and on there we'll be discussing a lot of different Coyote Swap topics, some general stuff. You can ask a lot of questions in the live chat room and even do our super chats. Make sure you check out our website, pbhperformance.com, and follow us on social media, both on Facebook and Instagram. If you have any questions about this product in particular, the part number is ACC131. Again, it retails for $359, and we will have them in stock. Thanks again for watching the video, guys. We really appreciate the support. If you got a project going on right now that has some PBH gear on it, make sure you use our hashtag, PBH Equipped. Once you do that, we'll be able to find you and highlight your project throughout all of our videos and our website.